All right, guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week, we're going to make a start on the Tamiya Wrecker. Now, this build is over 100 steps just for the basic build. We'll also be adding Tamiya's MFC and boom lift actuator, plus some custom electronics for extra features. It's going to take a while, so rather than have Tamiya Wrecker every week until Christmas, we're going to break it up a bit with some other projects and events here and there. Right then, here we go. As usual, we'll be starting slow on the off chance someone's picked up one of these as their first build. We will spend lots of time on the first couple of steps, then start to pick up the pace. Really though, I would practice on a cheaper kit first. First up then are the tools. Now you can get away with a Phillips driver, but it won't be a perfect fit in the screws, making some of them a bit awkward. We really need a set of JIS drivers, Japanese industry standard. They're easy enough to find, and for a kit this size, or any Tamiya really, it does make it a lot easier to put together. As an example, if we pop the Phillips driver in the Tamiya screw, you can see it's wobbly and just won't stay put. But with the correct JIS driver, the screw will stay on the end of the driver quite happily. Much nicer. The kit comes with some basic Allen keys, but a set of ball-ended ones does come in handy here and there. A set of square-ended Allen drivers is nice to have too. Most of the screws are, of course, JIS, but for the few Allen heads, it's nice to have the right tools. Then we have some pliers, a small knife, and tweezers. Now, even before you get to the body, all of these will come in useful throughout the build. We'll also need some flush side cutters. Now these ones have a built-in wire stripper, but I'm only using them as my regular pair seem to have gone AWOL. We need them so we can cut the plastic parts from the parts tree with a nice clean cut. For a couple of steps of the build, we're going to need some glues. We have some poly cement here, but we're also going to need some sort of contact adhesive, plastic weld and cyanoacrylate at various points. On the next page then, we have step one, where we prepare the servos. There's a lot of things to take in here, but it boils down to a fairly simple step. First, before we actually get to the servos, we need to pull out some parts. Right at the beginning, it has a big A, so we need to open up bag A for the metal parts for this section. This kit goes all the way up to bag K, so there's a lot to be getting on with. Plus, we have an unmarked bag with the extra bits, like the tools, grease and some thread lock. We got some foam strips, servo tape, spiral wrap and zip ties. The tools bag with your typical cross wrench and spanner. A tube of ceramic grease that works really well in the axles and gearbox. Now I'm going to add some blue lithium for the differentials to try and stiffen them up a little. It's extremely sticky stuff that's really going to gum up the diff gears so we won't have to worry so much about one tyre fires. The thread lock the kit comes with is Tamiya's gel. Now it works just fine and is fairly plastic friendly if you accidentally overdo it. But I'm going to use some liquid thread lock instead. It's not hugely friendly towards plastic, so you have to be very careful with it. But I find it a little bit easier to get consistent results with the liquid. In bag A then, we have a few bits and bobs. There's a couple of screws bags, the rubber bump stops for the rear suspension, all the brackets for the front leaf springs, lots of rod ends for the steering, a couple of rods, the servo saver springs, and the brackets for the rear suspension. So we can get at the parts easily, we'll transfer all the small parts to some pudding pots. Pots with a rounded inside are ideal, but anything will do just to keep all those parts nice and safe. The larger parts, like the brackets, will just go off to one side. Bag A will be with us from step 1 to step 10, then we move on to bag B. So don't be tempted to grab another bag if you can't find something. For now, it should all be in bag A. As mentioned in step one, we're setting up the servos. So we're going to need the servos. My friend Ben, who I'm building this for, has supplied two 20 kilogram low cost servos, which should do the job nicely. Neither the steering or the gear shift are going to need a vast amount of torque. These are going to be way over the top. On trucks like these, any standard size servo will work, the most important bit is that they're nice and precise. If you go with a mid-range Futaba or other name brand, you're going to be set. At the cheaper end, it can be a bit hit or miss though. 
We don't need any of the accessories that come with the servos, as we will be building up the servo savers from the Tamiya parts. The very first part of the manual has us power up the servos with the receiver and transmitter. This is partly to test the system, but the main thing is we need the servo centered before we fit the servo savers. Powering up the system with the trim centered will work, but if you're into building kits like this, I'd really invest in a servo tester. This one's my own design. Sadly, it isn't available at the moment due to rather annoying supply issues. I have an updated version partly complete, but it's a fair way off from being ready though. There's lots of others available on eBay and from good model shops. Anything that you can reliably set the center will do the job just fine. Next, we need some plastic parts. In this case, we need the Q and P parts trees. Each part in the diagram has a part number. For instance, the gear shift arm is P2. So that's parts tree P and part number two. Each tree is marked with its own letter. Because there's a few different types of servo splines, there's two different bosses for each servo saver. One's marked Tamiya Futaba and the other one Sanwa. The servos we have here are Futaba compatible with 25 teeth, so we need a Futaba boss. All we do is use the side cutter to trim them away from the tree. For the gear shift, we end up with the plastic washer, arm, spring and boss. And for the steering, we have the top cap, arm, and the boss. Again, the Futaba version. For metal parts, we're going to need the springs for the steering. There's three of them, each one slightly bigger than the next. The idea being they're going to fit inside each other to make a stiffer spring. And lastly, we need all the screws and the other bits. They're listed on the left in actual size, so they're fairly easy to pick out. We need two M2x8 two cap heads two 2mm washers, a 4mm ball end, and two 5mm ball nuts. Also, we need a couple of screws to attach the servo savers. Now, these will depend on your particular servo. Generally, most Futaba compatible servos with metal gears will use M3 screws, so we need two M3x10s. Okay, right, assembly time. We will start by fitting the balls to the arms, since it's easier to get at them before we fit them to the servos. For the gear shift, we need to pop in the 4mm ball end to the outside middle hole on the white arm. It'll need some thread lock, but before applying it, we need to keep in mind that we want to avoid getting any on the plastic. The trick, where possible, is to spin the nut on first, then add a drop of thread lock on the exposed thread, and run the screw in and out to pick up some of the thread lock in the threads. Nip up the screw and nut, then wipe off the excess. It seems like a bit of a hassle, but the issue is that the thread lock can affect the plastic, making it brittle, especially if it's fairly thin. Plastic mounting lugs are a favourite. With too much thread lock, you might find after a couple of days, bits start falling off. Do your best to avoid contamination and you'll be good to go. On the steering arm, we need to use the two M2 screws with washers under the heads in the outside holes. This time we have ball nuts to thread on. Now there's not enough thread to use our trick with the thread lock, so we'll apply a tiny bit near the end of the screws. It's not ideal, but it will work well enough. As the ball gets threaded on, the threads will pick up the thread lock, meaning there shouldn't be much left in the open by the time it's all the way down. Fit both the balls, nip them up, and that's both the arms ready to go. Next, we need to power up the servos and build the servo savers. The idea is we want the servos powered at their central position so the arm is at the right angle. You'll need to set your trims to the midpoint, or if you have a servo tester, set it to 50%, 1500 microseconds, or whatever it says on the dial. On my tester, I can just press the button to lock it at center. Now, when we plug the servo in, it'll go straight to its center point. For the steering, we need to press on the servo saver boss with the lug for the spring towards the main body of the servo. Basically, carefully check the diagram and match it. Of course, it's never quite that simple. Servos aren't always completely accurate. You almost always end up with the servo arm slightly off one side or the other. The trick is to find the point where it's as close to straight as you can get it. Next, we stretch the spring over the boss, starting with the smallest and ending with the large black one. 
It can be a bit of a struggle as they are fairly tight, but I found working them around the edge and then using the flat face of the pliers to press them down work quite well. They're a really hard spring steel, so they're pretty tough. Next, the arm goes on, tying in with the springs, followed by the top cap. Then one of the m 3 by 10s goes in to hold it all together. At some point, we'll add a tiny bit of thread lock too, but for now, there's a fair chance we're gonna to need to pop it off again during the build. So for the time being, we'll just leave it dry. The gear shift servo is more or less the same. We need to power up and center the servo, fit the boss, getting it as straight as we can, pop the plastic spring over the boss, which is much easier than the metal ones, pop in the servo saver arm, drop the plastic washer in the top and thread in the other M3 by 10. This time we don't want to leave the servo centered. The end of the arm gets in the way of the mounting lugs, so we need to turn the servo to one end of its travel so we can fit the servo to its mount in the next step. All right, step two, the servo mounts. For the metal parts, we're gonna need four three by eight self tappers, four three millimeter washers, and five three by eight washer head self tappers. For the plastic to mount the gear shift servo, we have D1 and D2. And for the steering servo, we have E4. It's all quite straightforward this. We just need to drop the steering servo into its mount and use the four three by eight self tappers with washers under the heads to attach it. Throughout the build, it's a good idea to fit all the screws so they're not quite done up all the way. So there's still a bit of wiggle in the parts. Then nip them up going from one side to the other until you've taken out all the slack. It's very important that you don't over tighten the screws. Not only can you crush the plastic, making it weak, but you can also strip the plastic, which makes it a bit of a pain to fix. The trick is to tighten them up until they're just snug, then add just a tweak more. Generally, there's no need to go any tighter. The shift servo mount is a little bit different as it's in two parts. The small part is adjustable, so it can take up the slightly different size servos. We use one of the washer head screws to put the two parts together. And for now, we want it set so we can still slide the parts while we put the servo in. Now we can offer up the servo and fit the last four screws a couple of turns. Then while holding the mount against the servo, we can tighten up the screws a little bit at a time until they're all snug. Then we can snug up the adjuster screw. All that's left is to power up the servo again and recenter it. Nice and simple, and both servos are ready to fit to the chassis, once we've built it. That's going to be next time though, as I think I've waffled on enough for the time being. We'll pick up the pace next time, running through the rest of bag A, putting together the chassis rails and attaching the servos. So until then, thanks for watching, like if you liked, subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment if there's something on your mind. Bye guys!